All right, let's talk about spin. Um, now, for for uh, a couple of days now, we've been talking about angular momentum, right? And uh, especially about orbital angular momentum, right? That is the uh, angular momentum if an electron is moving, say, about a proton, for example, in a hydrogen atom. Right, so it's angular momentum that's uh, associated with uh, R cross P. Right. And um, now at the, at the end of the last class, um, I suggested that there might be this other kind of angular momentum, right? that the electron might also be spinning about its own axis in addition to moving around the proton. Um, so there can be this uh, further type of angular momentum spin. And this type is harder to visualize, right? Because we think of an electron as a point particle. Um, we don't really think about the uh, internal structure of an electron. Um, but, but even so, there is this phenomenon, right, that there is something about the internal state of the electron that, that looks like spin, looks like a form of angular momentum. And so um, we just uh, have to accept that it's there as, say, an uh, internal state of the particle, um, even if it's not quite clear what's spinning. So, um, you know, the, the nice feature of all this mathematical stuff that we've been doing in the semester is that, um, you know, it can guide us even in situations where it's not really clear what to do. And so even if we don't have a visualization of what the spin means, we can still say, well, any observable property is a Hermitian operator. So spin, whatever it is, it must be a Hermitian operator. So we'll say there's a, a spin operator, the vector S, which has an X component and a Y component and a Z component. And these things are all Hermitian operators. All right, these guys. Okay, and then we could say, well, if it's a kind of angular momentum, so um, it should have the same operator algebra uh, as the orbital angular momentum. So that means it should have the same commutators. So that we would say the commutator of Sx with Sy ought to be I h bar Sz. And the commutator of Sy with Sz should be I h bar Sx. And the commutator of S z with s x should be i h bar s y. Um, and oh, likewise, there should be an s squared operator. That is, you know, s squared is s x squared plus s y squared plus s z squared. And the commutator of that with any of the individual s's has to be zero. Right? And the same for s squared with s y or s z. Um, so that means we can still follow the same mathematical procedures that we did with orbital angular momentum. 
when it comes to spin. Okay, so that means we can um, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of spin. Or to be more specific, we can find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of S squared and one of the individual S's, but not the other two. We have to pick one. Um, and um, everybody picks the Z component. Uh, and so we, we can find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of S squared and S sub Z. Right? Um, but we cannot, um, the, the, the states that are eigenvectors of SZ will not also be eigenvectors of SX and SY. They cannot be because um, the commutator of SX and SY with SZ is not equal to zero. Um, okay, so we, we did this kind of calculation um, for the orbital angular momentum just based on, um, on playing with operators, right? Based on figuring out stuff with commutators. We defined the uh, raising and lowering operators. And we went through all that calculation. It took us an hour or so. Um, so all that just carries over to spin. It, because it's all just based on the properties of the operators. Okay, so um, that means um, we can just copy over the results, right? So in particular, that means that um, when we go to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of S squared and Sz, um, we get, um, states that are uh, characterized by two quantum numbers. Um, when we were dealing with uh, orbital angular momentum, right, we called them L and M. Right? Um, now here, when we're dealing with spin, um, people use a different letter. And instead of L, they use the letter S, okay? And it means the same thing as L, but L is for orbital angular momentum and S is for spin. Um, and for M, oh, people sometimes still use M or sometimes M sub S. Um, that's just a, a sociological statement about what people say. That's not a physics statement. Um, either way, it means the same thing, right? So that means that uh, you know, S is an integer or a half integer uh, greater than or equal to zero. And M, he goes from S to, uh, from negative S to positive S uh, in steps of one. Okay, and then um, in terms of these two quantum numbers, the eigenvalue of S squared is H bar squared times S times S plus one. And the eigen, uh, whoops, the eigenvalue of S sub Z is 
uh, h bar m. Okay, so that's just the same stuff that we found dealing with the orbital angular momentum, but now translated into working with spin instead of orbital angular momentum. Um, okay, so now you say, what about the eigenvector? Well, here, uh, whoops, eigenvector. Um, here, I don't have a really good answer, right? Because it's not as if the eigenvector is a function of x, y, and z, uh, because x, y, and z have to do with the position of the particle. And spin doesn't have to do with the position. It has to do with the internal state of the particle at a fixed position. Okay. So it's um, not going to be a function of x, y, z, or r theta phi. r theta and phi are the same thing as x, y, and z, just in a different coordinate system. So um, that means it's not a spherical harmonic. The spherical harmonics are functions of uh, theta and phi. So what, what is it? Well, I, I don't have a great description of what it is. It's an internal state, okay? And so even though um, I don't really know what it is, I can give it a name. I can label it as a cat, right? It's a cat, which we can label as SM, okay? So it's a, a pair of numbers, right? And so uh, any spin state can be labeled by the pair of numbers, right? So we could write the spin state as um, one comma zero or one comma minus one or one comma one, right? Uh, usually people um, leave off the comma if they're dealing with letters like this, S and M. I mean, you could put a comma there, but usually people leave it off. But people do put a comma in between numbers like one and zero or one minus one, um, because otherwise it just looks too weird. It looks like state 10 instead of one, zero. Okay. Um, the comma doesn't really matter. It's just for clarification. Okay. So the point is, it's two numbers. Okay. So it's two numbers like that. Right? Or it could be two numbers like one half, one half, or one half minus one half, right? That would be if S equals a half and M equals plus a half or M equals minus a half. Okay. Now, the point is that um, because the state is um, not a spherical harmonic, um, S doesn't have to be an integer. It can be a half integer. So this is now a difference from orbital angular momentum. Right? When we were dealing with orbital angular momentum, um, we, we found that um, you know, the, the commutation relations require S to be an integer or a half integer. Um, but 
when we actually go to find the spherical harmonic states, L has to be an integer. So with, with orbital angular momentum, you know, we might have thought that L could be an integer or a half integer based on the commutation relations, but, but not so. It becomes more specific when we're dealing with uh, actual functions of theta and phi. But not the case when we're dealing with spin. When we're dealing with spin, the half integers are, are absolutely possible. Okay. So it turns out that the value of S depends on the type of particle. The different kinds of particles have different values of S. Okay? And that's one of the things that people in particle physics study is what is the, the value of S for any particular type. Okay. So for electrons, for example, we have um, S equals one half, okay? or we say electrons have spin one half. For photons, it's S equals one. We say photon is a spin one particle. For, for gravitons, that is the, uh, the particle in, in, a in a quantum description of gravity, it's S equals two. Let's say that gravitons are spin two particles. Okay, but in general, the case for electrons is the case for most elementary particles. This is the most common case. It works for electrons and protons and neutrons and quarks. Um, that these things are uh, spin a half, S equals one half. So that's really the most important case. And that is what I'm going to concentrate on. Uh, one half. Okay, so let's let's emphasize, right? What what is the the quantum mechanical description of spin when s equals one half? So if s equals one half, then there are two states with different values of M, okay? So we could have the states M equals plus a half and M equals minus a half. Um, now there are different kinds of notation that people use for these states, depending on personal choice, right, for the, the people who are writing this thing down, right? Um, so sometimes people write the states as S comma M, one half, one half, and one half comma minus a half. Or sometimes people say, well, everything has S equals a half, that's too much writing to write that one half at the beginning all the time. So I'll leave it off. I'll just call these one half and minus a half like that. Or sometimes people uh, label these states as uh, up and down, all right? For plus and minus a half. 
or they might stick those things inside of cats. Okay. Those would be um, good descriptions, right? Um, in the textbook, um, the, uh, the authors often use a notation of chi plus and chi minus. Uh, I have not seen that elsewhere, but that's what the textbook authors like. Um, this is the, the Greek letter chi. Um, correct. Um, or sometimes people write these things as con vectors. So you could write this as the column vector one zero, and this one as the column vector uh, zero one. Right. And the column vector, um, that's supposed to remind you right, that this state is one times the first thing, chi plus, plus zero times the second thing, chi minus. And likewise, this one is uh, zero times chi plus, plus one times chi minus, okay? And so you, you write out both of these coefficients, the one and the zero to know you know, how much chi plus there is and how much chi minus there is. So that's with the notation in the textbook, right? Or people equivalently could write that as one times the up cat plus zero times the down cat. Or, and this one is zero times the up cat plus one times the down cat or use any of those other notations that are up there. Right? These are all equivalent ways of saying the same thing, right? I mean, they're, they're alternative ways of saying the same thing. Now, the, the column vector notation is really handy because it reminds us that um, we, we don't have just these two states, but we can make combinations of these two states. The same as we made combinations of any of the states that we were dealing with you know, in this semester, right? So back you know, with our very first problem in the semester when we had the, uh, the particle in the 1D box, right? We found you know, there could be a state with um, quantum number one. Right, it's the one that looks like this, right? Or there could be a state with quantum number two that looks like that, right? Or we could have linear combinations of those states. So the same thing here with these spin states. Whatever they mean, we can make combinations of them. Right? So the um, the general state. We could write it as a, a column vector like this, A, B. So that means A times one zero plus B times zero one. Or it means A times chi plus plus B times chi minus or a times the up cat plus B times the down cat. And these are all, again, alternative ways of writing the same thing, right? It's a linear combination where um, we have um, some of the first state and some of the second state. And these uh, a and B are two coefficients, which are complex numbers. 
like the coefficients that we've been dealing with all through the semester. The word for this kind of object is called a uh, spinner, spinner like that, um, which I believe is short for a spin vector. So this is not a uh, spinner like you would use in a board game, right? That's, this is a much more sophisticated concept than that. Okay, so this is a spin or or spin vector, which is one of these uh, linear combinations. Okay, now, one way that you might recognize, you know, dealing with vectors like this, or this, is from, um, you know, back, remember a few weeks ago, I gave you my, um, silly little story about the electron that can be in two positions, right? And so the state of the electron was a linear combination of something times the state at position one plus something times the state at position two. Okay, now, now that was just a silly little children's story, right? Because we know electrons really don't have just two positions. Right? but they really do have just two spin states, right? And so all the things that I was saying is kind of a joke back then, it's actually totally serious here, right? And so all of that theory with describing, you know, the Hamiltonian as a two by two matrix, that is exactly what people do when it comes to spin, right? We work with the operators to describe what's going on in this spin space. And so it is a two-dimensional Hilbert space when it comes to spin. And so we have vectors like this that are uh, column vectors with two rows, or row vectors with two columns. Um, the, 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 the kets are column vectors. The bras are row vectors. The operators are two by two matrices. So all, all of that kind of stuff you know, really does apply here when we're working with spin states. Okay, so let's let's do some of that to see how it looks. Okay, so um, you know one thing we need to do is an inner product. Okay, so. What happens if we have uh, two spin states? Okay. So we have um, you know, chi one is A one B one and chi two is A two B two. Okay. Then we could say What's the inner product between them, between chi one and chi two? Well, um, this is the, the combination of the chi one bra with the chi two ket. So this is the bra A one star B one star complex conjugates, uh, the matrix multiplication with A2, B2. So it is A1 star A2 plus B1 star B2. Okay, so this is, um, how we do inner products if we only care about uh, spin uh, not position. You might say um, 
What if we care about both? Spin and position. All right. Well, in that case, um, we need a state that depends on both spin and position. So we could write that state as a psi, which has a spin dependence because it has uh, two components. And each of those things depends on position. It may be on time also. So uh, psi A of R and T and psi B of R and T. Okay, so that would be uh, a, a spinor which depends on both spin and position. Right? It depends on position through these bars, and it depends on spin because it has something on the top and something else on the bottom. Okay, and so it's something times. Oops, it's something times the upcat plus something else times the down cat. Okay, so now if you have two such states, we could say there's a psi one, which looks like psi uh, a, a one, of RT psi B one of R and T. That's for the first. The second one is psi A two of R T psi B two of R T. Okay. And then the inner product of those two things is going to be, um, we, we need to take the sum over the two spin states. So A1 star times psi A2 plus psi B1 star times psi B2, okay? Now all of this depends on position and time. And so now we have to integrate this over all position, okay? So we integrate over position and some over spin. Um, so, you know, there, up, up till now in this semester, we've been doing things where we only care about position and I didn't even tell you about spin. There, there are other problems and, you know, we can do some practice problems now where we only care about spin and don't, care about position, but for the general case, we need to do both, right? To have the position dependence and the spin dependence. Um, okay, and then what? Well, then we can talk about normalization. If we, um, if, you know, we, we need normalization for everything we do in quantum mechanics, right? And so we still need it now. And so 
that means we require that a wave function should be normalized. That means we require that the inner product of psi with itself is one. Where the inner product now means both the integral over position and the sum over spin. If we only care about spin, okay, then we just mean the sum over spin. If we care about both, then we have to do both of those things. And you know, we um, we assume these states like this and you know, the up state and the down state are normalized. Okay, that is up inner product with up equals one and down inner product with down equals one and up inner product with down equals zero. Uh, so I, I guess I should say not just normalized, but these things are orthonormal. They're orthogonal to each other and normalized. So, um, you know, that says uh, if we have the state, um, you know, pi equals a b, so that's a times up plus b times down then the inner product of chi with chi, that's the inner product of A star with the bra up plus B star with the bra down times uh, A times the ket up plus B times the ket, oops, the ket down. So this is A star A times up, up, plus A star B times, oops, uh, up, down, plus, B star A is down inner product with up plus B star B times the inner product of down with down. Okay, and now this is zero, this is zero, this is one, this is one. So this whole thing is A star A plus B star B. Right, so it's the magnitude of A squared plus the magnitude of B squared. Uh, okay, so that tells us then that uh, this state chi is normalized if a magnitude squared plus B magnitude squared equals one. And the absolute value squared have to add up to one. Um, okay, we're good, good so far with this stuff. All right. So, you know, Let's think about how to represent operators here. I argued back when I was doing my little children's story when with the two-state electron, right? Any operators 
can be described as two by two matrices, which summarize what they do to each of the possible states. Right. So let's do that now for our spin operators. So let's um, represent operators by two by two matrices. Okay, so um, that, let's start with um, the, the S squared operator. Okay. So what does the S squared operator do to any of these states? Okay, well, so the S squared acting on the up state, that's S squared acting on S is a half, M is a half. Okay. Well, we, we discussed, you know, back at the beginning of this class, right, what S squared does, right, that this state is an eigenstate of S squared, and the corresponding eigenvalue is h bar squared times s times s plus one. Uh, it's an eigenstate, so it's just multiplying this. And here, s is a half. Right. So this is. Oh, excuse me, that was an h bar squared. <laughs> All right. So then this is h bar squared times a half times three halves times that state, a half a half. Okay. So that's three fourths h bar squared times that state. Or we could write the same thing as three fourths h bar squared times the up state. Or we could say that's three fourths h bar squared times the up state plus zero times the down state. So that means that S squared acting on one zero equals three fourths H bar squared times, uh, whoops, one zero. Okay, now let's do all the same thing for the down state. Okay, so that means that S squared acting on the down state, well, that's the same story. H bar squared S S plus one times the down state. And S is the same, right? These states both have S equals a half. They just have different values of m. So it's again uh, 3 fourths h bar squared times the down state plus 0 times the up state. Right? There's nothing like that. Okay? So in the, in the column vector notation, S squared times one zero equals three. I, whoops, I wrote zero one and said one zero. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, uh, equals three fourths h bar squared times zero one. So that's the information we need 
to represent S squared by a two by two matrix, okay? So you could say if, um, if we want to say S squared is some matrix like C, D, E, F, okay? then uh, how does that act? C, D, E, F acting on one zero gives us uh, C zero. No. What am I talking about? Give us, thanks. Sorry, something is messed up in my notes. It, on the top, it is C times one plus uh, D times zero. On the bottom, it is E times one plus F times zero. Okay. But we want this to be equal to three fourths H bar squared times one zero. Therefore, we conclude C equals three fourths H bar squared and E equals zero. Likewise, if we let C, D, E, F act on zero, one, that gives us on the top C times zero plus D times one, that's D. And then on the bottom, E times zero plus F times one, that's F. And we want it to be equal to three fourths H bar squared times zero, one. So we see D has to be zero and F has to be three fourths H bar squared. So that tells us that the matrix representation of S squared is three fourths H bar squared, zero, zero, three-fourths h-bar squared. Or we could write it as three-fourths h-bar squared times the identity matrix, like that. Uh, okay, good. So this is a matrix representation of one of our operators. Okay, um, how about SZ? Well, we can do just the same story. Okay, so let's say, what is SZ acting on one zero? So that means SZ acting on the up state or SZ acting on one half comma one half. Okay. Well, this is an eigenvalue of SZ. So uh, it's an eigenvector of SZ and the corresponding eigenvalue is um, H bar M. So it's h bar m times that state where m is a half. Okay. So this is one half h bar uh, times the up state, or it's one half h bar times the state one zero. And likewise, if you have SZ acting on zero one, that makes SZ acting on down. So that's SZ acting on 
one half minus a half. So h bar m one half minus a half, where here m is negative a half. This is the negative half state. So that is negative a half h bar times well, one half minus a half or times the down state equally. So negative a half h bar times zero one. So once again, we can um, work out what are the four components of SZ as a two by two matrix. And here, um, if you go through the same little procedure that I did for S squared, uh, you get that uh, SZ is um, H bar over two, zero, zero, negative H bar over two. Or we could write that as H bar over two, times the matrix one, zero, zero, negative one. So it's, it's not the identity that goes here. It's something that looks sort of similar, but different. Now, the same thing works for S, X and S, why? Those things can also be represented as matrices in this um, kind of notation, matrices in this basis. Okay, so um, let's, let's do, well, I'll, 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 I'll go to the answer and then we can check the answer in a few ways, right? So the the textbook works out this whole thing in detail, right? That S X is the matrix H bar over two, zero, one, one, zero. And S Y is the matrix H bar over two, zero minus I, I zero. And then here, to, just to remind you, SZ is H bar over two, um, one, zero, zero, minus one. Um, let's, let's check this in a few ways. Okay, so um, what are some checks? Uh, one check would be, uh, are they uh, Hermitian? Right, well, um, you, you found out on the, the last homework that you did, right, that a Hermitian matrix has to equal the uh, transpose complex conjugate, right? And so um, here, uh, SZ is, real and symmetric. So that's okay. S X is real and symmetric, right? If you take the transpose, you just switch the one and the one, it's the same and they're real. For S Y, if you take the transpose, you switch the I and the minus I. And if you take the complex conjugate, you change I to minus I and vice versa. And those two changes together cancel each other out. So these things are all Hermitian matrices. So yes, passes that check. Um, what about another check? Okay, what, what do we get if we take the combination of Sx squared plus Sy squared plus Sz? squared. 
Uh -huh. So to do that, we need to do matrix multiplication. Okay. So for Sx squared, that's h bar squared over four, then zero, one, one, zero times zero, one, one, zero. Okay. Plus h bar squared over four, uh, zero minus i, i, zero. Zero minus i, i, zero plus h bar squared over four, one, zero, zero, minus one, one, zero, zero, minus one. Okay, here, brush up on our matrix multiplication. Okay, so for the first term, let's see, zero times zero plus one times one. For the upper right corner, uh, zero times one plus one times zero. Lower left corner, uh, one times zero plus zero times one. Uh, lower right corner, one times one plus zero times zero. Okay, so uh, that's Sx squared. Sy squared is, let's see, uh, zero times zero plus negative i times i, that's one. Then zero times minus i plus minus i times zero. Then i times zero plus zero times i. Then i times negative i plus zero times zero. Okay, that's identity again in here. Plus h bar squared over four. And well, it works here too, right? One times one plus zero times zero. And these are zeros and this is a one. Okay, so this is uh, three fourths h bar squared times the identity matrix. And that's the same as s squared, okay? So that checks out, right? That um, makes sense that these things should have uh, this sort of relationship. Okay. Um, how about the commutators? Let's try those things too. Okay. So for the commutators, okay. So if you want the commutator of S X with S Y, what's that? That's Sx, Sy minus Sy, Sx. Okay. So that would be h bar over two, uh, zero, one, one, zero times uh, zero minus i, i, zero. And the, uh, whoops, and then there's another factor of h bar over two, so h bar squared over four. Okay, and then minus h bar squared over four, uh, zero minus i, i zero, and zero, one, one, i. So what do we get here? That's h bar squared over four. Uh, let's see, doing this matrix multiplication, uh, here we have zero times zero plus one times i, okay? Zero times minus i plus one times zero. Uh, let's see, zero times, uh, one times zero plus zero times i, and then one times minus i plus zero times zero. Okay, minus h bar squared over four, then what? Um, zero times zero plus negative i times one. And uh, then what? Zero times one plus negative i times zero, i times zero plus zero times one, 
and one times uh, I times one plus zero times zero. Okay, so this is h bar squared over two times i zero zero minus one. So that is a factor out the i. I h bar squared over two times one zero zero minus one. And this is I h bar times h bar over two one zero zero minus one. Oh, look, and this is SC. So it's I h bar SZ. Okay, so that checks out the way it's supposed to. Um, you could do the same thing for the commutator of SY with SZ or SZ with SX. Uh, I'm not going to do it here. That would be a good problem for a homework or a final exam or something like that. Um, okay. Um, what else could we look at? Um, well, remember we had the um, the uh, raising and lowering operators, okay? So we had S plus and minus is Sx plus or minus Isy. Okay, so let's look at the raising one. S plus is S x, that's an x, as x plus i s y. So that is h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, plus i times h bar over 2, 0 minus i, i, 0. Okay, so that is h bar over two times, um, let's see, zero, and then one plus one, that's a two. Uh, then let's see, uh, one minus one, that's a zero, that's a zero. So it's h bar times 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, let's see what that does to one of these states. Okay, so s plus acting on the up state, that's h bar times 0, 1, 0, 0, acting on 1, 0. So that's h bar times, uh, let's see, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0, 0. And then 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0. Well, that's just 0. Well, that makes sense, right? If you start with the up state and you hit it with a raising operator, it kills it, right? If you can't raise higher than the up state, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. What about the down state? If S plus acts on the down state, that's H bar 0, 1, 0, 0, acting on 0, 1. So that's H bar times, uh, let's see, 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1, and then uh, 0 times 0 plus 0 times 1. Okay. So this is h bar times the upstate. Okay. So if you have the raising operator and you act on the downstate, it raises it right, to the upstate. So that's what it's supposed to do. Okay. So all that is um, consistent also. Um, one more point that I should mention, 
Okay, let's go back to the SX and SY again. Well, here, I'll just do SX. Um, SX has eigenvalues and eigenvectors, the same as uh, SZ does. Okay, so suppose we want to diagonalize this. Okay, well, here, I'll, 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 I'll show you the answer. What is SX acting on the state 1, 1? Well, wait, that's not normalized. Let's normalize it. What is SX acting on the state? 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. That's normalized, right? Because 1 over root 2 squared plus 1 over root 2 squared is 1. OK. Sx acting on that is h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. Uh, whoops. Times 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Okay. So that is h bar over 2 times. On the top, we have uh, 0 plus 1 over root 2. On the bottom, we have 1 over root 2 plus 0. Oh, look. This is a number times the vector that we started with. Okay. So that means this is an eigenvalue of S x, and this is an eigenvector of sx. OK, what about sx times 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2? Okay. So that's h bar over 2. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. So that's h bar over 2. And then on the top, we have negative 1 over root 2. And on the bottom, 1 over root 2. So this is negative h bar over 2 times the vector we started with. OK, so here, this negative h bar over 2 is the eigenvalue. And this vector is the eigenvector. OK, so that means um, Sx has eigenvalues and eigenvectors, just as Sz has eigenvalues and eigenvectors. All right. So the um, the Sz eigenvalues are a half h bar and minus a half h bar. And the corresponding eigenvectors are, uh, whoops, um, the corresponding eigenvectors are 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay. For Sx, the eigenvalues are the same thing, one half h bar and minus one half h bar. And the corresponding eigenvectors are one over root two, one over root two, and one over root two minus 1 over root 2. Right. 
Or if you like the up and down notation, right? This is up, this is down. This is a linear combination of up and down, right? This is one over root two times up plus one over root two times down, right? So it's not as if the, the states of Sx positive and Sx negative, it's not as if those are off in some completely different space. It's the same space. It's just the Sx eigenstates are some linear combination of the Sz eigenstates. And this is one over root two uh, minus one over root two times down. Uh, okay, and the S, SY is the same, and somehow I do not have it in my notes right here. Well, the S, SY, eigenvalues are the same. And the eigenvectors, I forgot to put it in my notes. They're, they're similar to this thing, but with eyes in them. I forgot, <laughs> sorry about that. But there, uh, I'll, 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 I'll get them for next time. Um, all right, so, um, num, 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 num. these are, um, so, so we didn't have to choose SZ, right? So we made kind of an arbitrary choice, right? We can find simultaneously eigenvalues and eigenvectors of S squared and one of the other S's. We picked SZ because everybody picks SZ, but we didn't have to. We could have picked SX or SY, uh, and we would have gotten the same eigenvalues and different eigenvectors. They're, they're rotated in some way. But we can describe any spin state in terms of SX eigenvectors or in terms of SZ eigenvectors. The same way that for a vector in a plane, we can write it as a linear combination of you know, vectors like this and this, right? Or we could write it as a linear combination of vectors like this and this. Right? Um, those are rotated versions of describing the same thing. Okay, the last thing I will say for today is that um, the, the S matrices, right? These three matrices, there's a conventional notation for these things that I should mention to you, okay? And there's a notation where you say, Oh, this factors of h bar over two, they're kind of annoying. Can we just leave them out? Okay, so um, conventionally, people write that the S operators are h bar over two, times this other set of matrices called sigma. Okay, so Sx is h bar over two sigma x. Sy is h bar over two sigma y. And Sz is h bar over two sigma z. Where these things at sigma X and sigma y and sigma z are called the Pauli uh, matrices. So sigma x is 0, 1, 1, 0. Sigma y is 0, minus i, i, 0. And sigma z is 
one, zero, zero, minus one. So these are um, matrices that you'll see in the textbook and in other books. This is a common kind of notation. And you know, these all have uh, commutation relations that are like the S's, but without the potentially annoying factors of H bar over two. Okay, that's where I want to wrap up for today. And um, on Monday, I want to show you an example of an actual calculation and kind of a practical calculation um, uh, that uses all this notation. Um, so a calculation of um, how the magnetic moment of an electron will spin when you put an electron in a magnetic field, which is what people do in, um, in um, spin resonance kinds of experiments, like NMR experiments. Um, okay, so that I will do on uh, Monday. So uh, I'll stop for now. Have a good weekend, you guys, except for the homework that's due on Monday. Don't forget that part. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. That's fine.